Hello friends, in this video we will be synthesizing barbituric acid using urea and diethyl malonate. For this synthesis, we will need 30 grams of urea. Note that the urea should be perfectly dry for the reaction to take place. 80 grams of diethyl malonate. 11.5 grams of sodium metal. Sodium should be clean from impurities. 500 milliliters of absolute ethanol. Ethanol should be pre-dried using molecular sieves. About 45 milliliters of concentrated 37% hydrochloric acid. A 500 milliliter round bottom flask is fixed onto an iron stand using a clamp. Sodium metal pieces are cleaned and dried from the mineral oil and are cut into small pieces. 11.5 grams of sodium metal was then transferred to the dry flask. Once it is all transferred, 250 milliliters of absolute ethanol was added to the flask. I went as per the literature and proceeded to add all the ethanol at once. But the exothermic reaction commences and becomes unduly vigorous. So I quickly set up a condenser on top of the flask and started adding the ethanol from the top of the condenser in small portions. If you feel like the reaction is getting out of control, it could be slowed down by immersing the flask in an ice bath for few seconds. So I have an ice bath at a hand's distance just in case if I need it. What is happening here is the reaction of sodium metal with ethanol forming sodium ethoxide and hydrogen gas is released as the side product. When all the sodium has completely reacted, 80 grams of diethyl malonate was transferred from the top of the condenser. I bought the diethyl malonate from chemical supplies as I did not have enough of it. If you cannot get diethyl malonate, you could synthesize it by Fischer esterification reaction between ethanol and malonic acid. Link to that is given in the description. You can see in this clip that diethyl malonate stays as a separate top layer in the flask. So I added a stirring bar and stirred the reaction mixture. Now a solution of 30 grams of dry urea in 250 milliliters of hot absolute ethanol was added through the top of the condenser. Note that the urea should be perfectly dry. I dried my urea in vacuum desiccator alongside anhydrous calcium chloride for one week. A thick white precipitate has formed. I thought this was the barbituric acid so I took some of it and tested for it but it wasn't barbituric acid. Anyway, the literature also says about the thick white precipitate. So I leave it as it is and move on. Next, I have to reflex the solution for 8 hours. So I set up an oil bath and immerse the flask equipped with condenser into it. This is the reaction that is taking place. When I came back after 8 hours, I noticed a suicide. The poor insect sacrificed itself jumping into hot oil, all for the love of chemistry. Now let us move on. The reaction mixture was added to around 200 milliliters of hot water at around 50 degrees C and immediately all the white precipitate dissolves and the solution appears somewhat clear. Now I tested the pH of the solution using an indicator paper. It was found to be basic. So I add concentrated 37% hydrochloric acid until the pH is acidic. I went along adding around 45 milliliters of acid. Now as per the literature I kept it in the fridge overnight for recrystallization. But here's the twist. Nothing happened the next day. There were no crystals. So I kept it aside and redid the experiment and this time using minimal amount of water but still it didn't work. So I kept it aside and redid the experiment and this time in the last part of the reaction I added minimal amount of water but still it did not work. In the third attempt all the equipments and chemicals used were perfectly dried. Also during the reflex a calcium chloride drying tube was placed above the condenser to prevent entry of moisture. 
all the chemicals were also pre-dried. In the final step, around 50 ml of water was added and the beaker was placed in the ice bath. This time we got lots of crystals. Assuming that this is barbituric acid, I moved along with filtration. A vacuum setup was used to filter. And after draining the liquid, the crystals were washed with ice cold water two times and drained. Crystals were having a pale yellow color and there was some pale pink colored precipitate also, which I have no clue about. Anyway, we will do the basic test for confirming barbituric acid. To the left, I have sodium nitrite solution and to the right, I have the presumed barbituric acid solution. The sodium nitrite solution was added to the barbituric acid solution. After a few seconds, we notice a color change to purple. This is the sodium violurate being formed. And this confirms that the compound is indeed barbituric acid. Now we move on with recrystallization. It was recrystallized using hot boiling ethanol water mixture of 70 is to 30 ratio. Activated charcoal was added to decolorize the compound as it was having a yellow color. The mixture was filtered while hot and on cooling crystals of barbituric acid separates out. After cooling down to room temperature, the beaker was placed in a refrigerator overnight. Next day we see lot of crystals inside the beaker. Now the color of the product has improved and it is much white. The product was then dried. Now let us move on to the calculation part. Diethyl melanate is the limiting reactant in this reaction. 160 grams of diethyl melanate should yield 128 grams of barbituric acid. So 80 grams of diethyl melanate should yield 64 grams of barbituric acid and that is the theoretical yield. The practical yield was 38 grams. So the percentage yield is 38 divided by 64 into 100 and that is 59 percentage. Anyway, that's all in this video. Hope you have enjoyed the video. These are all my Patreon supporters who are financially helping me so that I am able to purchase new equipments and chemicals required for doing new videos. You can also support me via Patreon or PayPal. The links for both of them are given in the description. Once again, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button so that you will get notified about my future videos.